Do you still make money or residuals off your first feature film? I think I made a total of about $25 now off of 15 North. Um, I guess that was a good learning experience. Uh, the, the biggest mistake with 15 North actually, come to think of it, came to distribution. Um, not with the actual creation of the movie, but with the getting it out there into the world. Uh, we went through like a, a third party sort of tertiary company that approached us after our premiere and they said that they wanted to distribute the movie. They loved it. We were, you know, young, early 20s. We were super excited to even have a distribution company approach us. Um, so we signed the contract, didn't get a lawyer, um, basically just, you know, signed it away. And this was a, you know, like I said, it was a third party company that basically just went through an aggregator uh, and we never saw a dime back. We never saw anything. And so what I learned from that movie was really know what you're doing when it comes to distribution and get a lawyer if you can and uh, do your research and be open to a negotiation. You're allowed to, this is a business and you are allowed to negotiate uh, ownership for your film. Do you still own the rights to it? So about two years ago, I had the contract terminated. That tertiary company actually went out of business and it, or it was bought by another company. And so we terminated the contract and now I self-distributed it on uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. Yeah, oh, which great. is why I say I made about 25 bucks because I think I get six cents for every hour watched or something like that. Yeah. So how long was it sort of out of your hands? You said it was 2012 when you started filming? It was 2012 uh, when we shot it. I think it came out in 2013. And then the contract, I think, ran for six years or seven years. And I terminated it maybe just a couple months before the contract was expired anyway. Your second feature film, Electric Love, is on Hulu currently? Is that yes, right? Yes, it is. And so how did that happen? How did you how did you get that Hulu deal? Well, I took everything I learned from my first movie, 15 North, and and when especially when it came to distribution and we applied it to Electric Love. We had we had a friend who uh, knew someone at Gravitas Ventures and um he was able to connect us with the with the people over there and they we're interested in the film. Uh, we even were offered a, an MG, minimum guarantee, or like an advance, um, which was for like about a tenth of our budget, which was super exciting because I had never, I had never experienced anything like that. And distribution for independent film is such a mystery to me. Uh, so we we actually did not jump right away. We were sort of determining whether or not we wanted to go with that or. Uh, perhaps, you know, field inquiries from sales agents or other distribution companies. But anyway, we ended up going with Gravitas and uh, they uh, had it distributed internationally and then they sold it to Hulu. And that was it was very exciting. And we actually made about half of our budget back just from that. So it was, oh, wow. it was a very validating and, and exciting and just super cool thing to happen. And what types of things do you need to do to get the film ready to show on a platform like Hulu? Actually, I'm, I'm trying to think of, we actually just got an email today with a list of things that they're, apparently they're still missing. So you, you need to deliver the film in its you know 4K uh, format. You need to put together an m and &E track, which is a music and effects track, which is basically w without the dialogue. Um, that way, internationally, they can dub over it in any language. Um, you need a complete transcription of every line spoken in the entire movie. Uh, there's, there's a lot of deliverables that are required and every platform sort of requires something different. Um, but the distributor sort of tells you, hey, we need this or hey, we need this. And then we just, you know, rush to do it. And if I can do it myself, then I will. Um, I think there were a couple of things that we needed to hire out, like the, the M&E track. Um, but, but you know, the distributor tells you what they need and so you give it to them. How long has it been on Hulu? I think it's been on Hulu now for, I wanna say a year. I, it, actually no. 
Maybe six months. Victoria would know. I forget. <laughs> I forget. Has anyone reached out to you about the film? I loved it. Watched it. This reminds me of me. I've got I've gotten a couple like friend request friend requests on Facebook um, or you know DMs in uh, on Instagram and uh, but you know not, nothing crazy. I think more so the the actors have received some feedback. I've I've heard uh, Zach, one of the stars of the movie, say he's has people from around the world message him. Um, yeah, I did post uh, a copy or a photo of me holding up the Blu-ray when it came out on Reddit. And uh, I, had a, I, I posted that to the filmmakers subreddit. And I think I got like a thousand upvotes or something. A lot of other filmmakers were asking, you know, questions about it. And I do definitely try to make myself available to people, independent filmmakers that have questions about distribution. I think it's such a secret for some reason. And nobody likes discussing numbers. And um, I think that only works to the advantage of the distributor. And I think it's important for filmmakers like us to actually share this information and learn how to properly distribute your movie and make money on it if you can. What have you found is the best way to make money as a filmmaker? To shoot weddings, probably. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, it depends what, what level you're at. In, in high school, that, that is what I did. I shot weddings and bar mitzvahs. Um, Nowadays, I probably make the most getting hired by companies to just shoot music videos. Um, we, we actually just started monetizing our YouTube channel. So that's, that's an, a nice, you know, extra source of income. Um, and surprisingly, making independent films that fit within a certain budget now, just with the with all of these streaming platforms, it's actually a lot easier to make your money back and then some on independent movies. So Electric Love was about $100,000. And so far, I think we've made about 70,000 of that back. And it's wow. a seven year uh, term that you sign with the distributor that we signed. And so over seven years, we certainly plan on breaking even, hopefully, and then even making a little bit after that. It doesn't happen immediately. So you definitely have to give it some time before you even see, you know, your first check in the mail. I think it was about two years before we received our first check from Electric Love after its release. But as, assuming you do it correctly, then you can certainly make money back doing that. And it's what I really respect about the Duplass brothers. They figured out their business model and it works for them. And, and I, I've always had a lot of respect for them. They create their own material, they have their pipeline, they put it through, they produce other other people's movies, and um, it's profitable, and they're able to do it again and again and again. What is that budget range that you think is the profitable budget range? I would say it's hard, it's hard to give like exact numbers. If I had to break it down, I'd probably say try to keep it below $100,000, um, especially if it's not a horror movie. I think if you make a horror film, there's, there's going to be a lot more uh, distributors nowadays that are willing to distribute something like that because like we were talking about before, it can be distributed to just about any country, non-English speaking country, and still translate. People will still enjoy it. Whereas a romantic comedy about online dating in Los Angeles won't necessarily translate to you know someone in Japan or some country that doesn't speak English as much. Um, so, yeah. And you said your budget for Electric Love was around 100000 It was It was about $100,000. And then Hulu, we got, we got 50K from Hulu, which was half the budget. And um, again, I, I, I like sharing the numbers mainly just to, to help filmmakers sort of get an idea as to what they can do uh, with these, these, with films in this sort of budget range. Cause just, sorry, do you mind if I ask how you raised that budget? Sure. So a lot of it was, uh, self-financed. Um, I, I put up, uh, a little, basically just savings from like the past since 15 North for the past five, six years. And it's not something I would recommend everyone do. Um, I did it and it's slowly working out. 
Um, but I was able to, you know, finance a lot myself. And another huge part of it, and this is like the second half, is Victoria actually was able to lock a lot of brand collaborations. So she comes from a background of Instagram and, you know, doing sponsorships and brand collabs. And we were able to get a lot of our wardrobe paid for, free meals, uh, even, you know, money given to us. We had friends come in and just kick in a little bit. Uh, so it was very much sort of like a crowdsourced kind of kind of thing. Um, and honestly, if I didn't have a, a savings, you know, five years worth of savings to put into it, uh, I still would have made it. We just would have done things a little bit differently. Uh, so it's definitely possible. And with these brand collaborations, is there a site you would go to to find brands or you were just cold calling what might fit with the movie or emailing? We were pretty much uh, just cold emailing companies, uh, you know, that had products or services that we could somehow include in the film without it being too obvious. I see. So you're finding things that would fit with the film and making a list and then exactly. reaching out and finding who their brand sort of manager is. And exactly. And, and Victoria is, is so good at that. She really just excels in, in that in marketing and producing and, and everything in that department. Was your pitch a long pitch or was it more to the point to these brands? Um, it, it's pretty to the point. I think at, at a certain point too, even when it came to post, we even had like a little loose trailer cut together that we could send over and say, here, Hey, here's what the movie looks like and here's what it is. And, we even got some brand deals after the fact when it came time to putting together a premiere. Um, so yeah, you know, just be direct. Don't, you know, be honest about what you're doing. Um, tell them where, where the movie might go and uh, you know, who's in it. That kind of stuff matters in, in that regard and uh, hope for the best. I think if you send out, you know, 200 emails, two companies might respond with a yes. With the brand uh, email, would you talk up sort of like what you could do for them more so than, hey, this is who we are? You know, I, I see a lot of pitches and sometimes it's more about this is who I am and this is and that's great. And I understand people are proud of their work, but sometimes it, it falls short in what they can do for the person they're asking something from. I, I, I actually would love to bring up uh, one of Victoria's emails so I could just read exactly how she... Uh you know, wrote it, but I, I think she would sort of focus on how this is going to benefit their company while simultaneously saying, you know, and in, in not in these exact words, but we know what we're doing and this movie is going to have eyeballs on it. So it's kind of like, a, you know, we're professionals and this can benefit you. And just last question about it, would you try, would you email them a second time if you heard no or, or did, I'm sorry, if you didn't hear anything? Um, traditionally not. Uh, I mean, I, I, I think we just emailed so many companies at a certain point that it was even hard to keep track of. Um, again, I don't know if that is like the best method, but I see no harm in it. And, you know, if a, a no is a no, it doesn't, it doesn't bother us. Um, you know, we, we've had plenty of rejection working in entertainment anyway. So, uh, you know, if a, if a company is like not for us, no big deal. And if they don't answer, then, you know, there's, there's plenty of other uh, uh, brands that we could reach out to. Where was the premiere? At the, uh, was it the, I think it was the Aria Fine Arts Theater on Wilshire. Nice. Yeah.